good information since we're here about the divisiveness because we know that America is right now, and particularly in our communities everywhere, white, black, even in white communities, there's divisiveness. There's yeah. more and more divisiveness. So I wanted to talk about Pastor Keith, and Keith has a very compelling story. <laughs> um, being a business owner in a time when he was a business owner and there was a monopoly going on, right? And they would not allow him the inclusiveness of fair business because of this divisiveness. And that's nothing but the devil. Yeah. You know, but I want Keith to talk about that, brother, if you don't mind, because it's a really an eye opener about the number one thing we're talking about. Although we're mentioning the Mormon church and some of their discrepancies, yeah. it all goes back to the number one factor, division, divisiveness. Absolutely. But Keith, go ahead, brother, if you, want, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, I had a concrete construction company and, um, Went to went to the schooling with them and um, hooked up with one of the premier um, general contractors here, which also brought more division because there were so many other people that was out here trying to start companies and want to piggyback with the big strong companies stuff like that, and then you fight with with folks that feel like, well, what makes you so special that they want to take you on? And, and mentor you and help you out. And the rest, the rest of us been in line trying to get into this market for decades. And, and it was really interesting because I'm an outsider coming in. I don't know who all the players are. Right. I didn't realize who didn't like who, who was holding grudges. I didn't even understand the hidden rules of what was going on. Only thing I wanted to do was I found I found something I like to do and I was good at it and um wanted to start a company and um maybe build it enough to the point where I can release it later and let my sons have it and run it. Right. While I go ahead and do ministry. But I fought I I ran across every opposition pretty much you can think of. I mean from from um small businesses as well as the large business and to include um from racism to even your own um jealousy within your race mm -hmm. which was uh even more difficult because i didn't know you don't know who to trust mm -hmm. and so um the real problem was it's like you starting off and you got a good product and you do a good work but you can't compete with certain people because first of all they have if you if if your business not established with vendors, they're not going to trust you with with giving you a a great deal on supplies. As well as suppliers are not going to give you a great deal on certain product because they don't know you. So you're trying to compete to even sustain a business, but you got folks that had the privilege of having. Their fathers, fathers, fathers pass all their business down to them. So they got decades of lineage and decades of heritage and power in that thing. So they monopolize the business with not only just suppliers, but with vendors and with other contract agencies and also with um, the government, local, state and federal. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you trying to get in. And, and the thing that you are told to, you know, since you're a minority, get you a minority uh, business entrepreneurship certification. You try to do that, but then you have people in the city hall are like gatekeepers. Mm. So they're blocking you from getting this because the guy told me, man, you know, one of the guys that own the most, one of the most powerful uh, construction companies here. In, in this part of the United States, he was like, he said, man, without that MVE, you guys are like two white guys with a hammer. <laughs> Basically was saying, you have no leverage. Mm -hmm. You have no, there's no incentives for anybody to give you or do anything for you. You have nothing to push you up to the front line to even so as you can be heard or even be considered. 
So only thing you basically would be getting is the scraps of everything that the big companies don't want. But the problem is the big jobs, if you want them, you have to be part of what they call this thing, the, um, the unions. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Which is, um, it, it's, you know, it has its, its good points for certain reasons, but it's definitely not for a startup business because you can't af- your, your, your payroll. You can't afford to pay these guys union wage scales. You can't afford to pay all the all the intricate components of the legislation that deal with the union because you got because they got a, tr- a three tri factor that will run you out of business quicker than anything else. Mm-hmm. Is the agents, is the trustees, and their lawyers, correct? And they all got deep pockets, mm-hmm. so. So it's 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 such a horrible racket because you know the mom and pop shops um was never allowed to even compete with people that's on a bigger scale that does the local city work or the local state work or, or federal jobs. And so mm-hmm. now you, you you got so many folks that does backbiting that keep you from getting in there because Maybe, you know, they didn't like the person that that you partnering with on your business because they had dealings with them 20 years ago, 20 years ago. And so so what they do, they will blackball you, if you will. They they, they put your name out there in that in that in that industry. Don't mess with them. He's with them. He's with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the unions against the non unions. You it's. It's 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 um it was more than an eye open. It was extremely I experience was stressful. I know I know that, that was a stressful experience for you because yeah, it's the one thing about you know not feeling included. And and and, and this is what I'm going back to because the Mormon church is guilty of that, but society itself is also guilty of it. Absolutely. But to a lot of those people that um were given you, Keith, the, the the problems. That's right. That were trying to be divisive. I mean, divisive. You know, create division. I bet that a lot of them call themselves Christians. A mm-hmm. lot of them call themselves Christians. You see, here's the problem. Now, now, this is what I'm getting to. And this is what I mean about religion. That's right. As they're, they're not experiencing the experience of Christianity. Right. Experiencing the experience of religion. And in religion that has been used for them to get to get ahead over other people. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because then, and this is a problem. You're not really truly representing anything about Jesus Christ when you're operating that way. And I just gotta call it for what it is. It, That's it's right. being divisive. It's not being inclusive. That's all you gotta look for. That's right. That's all you look for. You 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 won't have to look for nothing technical. I, okay, I see this field; it still harbors racism. Yes, these people will not allow me to even get a foot in. They won't let you get a foot and, in, right? I didn't I didn't come in kicking the dough down. I didn't come in saying, you know, I want the top spot. No, I just want to have my business. I want to operate it and run it. That's but right. here's the thing about division: people who have a mentality of divisiveness and that's what racism is that's all it is it is it's who gonna be included and who not gonna be included it, 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 it is, it's, it's in the structure of everything it's a systematic structure it goes it goes from a place like saying the concrete mill all the way to the banks right right because if you don't get line of credits Mm-hmm. You can't keep your payroll. You can't keep your vendors going. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the, you know. So it's it, it's so systematically set up. It, it, you start off if you're not starting off with capital, large capital in your pocket, with assets in your pocket, and know how, and get it going. It would take you if you could ever truly get out of the pit to even compete. Right, because you start off in the pit. 
Right. And I know many brothers like that. I mean, you, that, that story you have is not the only one. Uh, yes. that many people uh, in general, and you can, it, it depends. It, it, it even happens in inside of a uh, group, ethnic groups of the same race. Yes. You see, and, and, and this is where it comes. It's not just one way, but the other side is sometimes you can have your own people. They, they're, they're not trying to support you in your business. No. no, they're not. They want, they look at you solely as competition. That's exactly what it was too. I, I, it's so a big it, problem. As, as strongly as we talk about yep. the divisiveness of other races, let's say white people that may be established uh, 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 with their businesses and they've passed them down. There's a lot of uh, nepotism that goes on. A lot oh, of yes. nepotism. And, a lot and, of nepotism. Right. And if you're not part of that, that family, of course, which you're probably probably not, like uh who was it? Either you or, 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 or Drew said these companies had generations, generations of uh of wealth, and it was just bequeathed on down, it was passed on down, you know. That's right. Uh when you when a lot of minorities don't have them, the, the generations of that wealth. So when we try to, like, I hate when people say pull yourself up by the bootstraps because that's silly. Right. And when you, this, this is an example right there. This is a living example. Right. Saying you need to throw that out the window. You yes. people use that pull yourself up by the bootstraps and stop doing this. And that, that's, a, that's, that's not the whole story. Because no, it's not. People do try to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. And the same people saying pull yourself up by the bootstraps, pulling you back down. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and even your own people, yes. especially your own race of people. I call y'all out the worst. Yeah. You don't want to support. If you do support, you're looking for the deal. Stop looking for the deal. Pay them like you'll pay the other people. That's right. We had a guy that was a deacon who was, who was the director of the HR who was solely responsible for those certifications and things like that to do get those type of um to minorities. Right. He will play the role that he's compassionate and listening to you, but he'll send his lynchman to do his dirty work. Mm -hmm. That's how I go. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, okay, so you're making us think that it's this white fella that don't like black people, mm -hmm. but you're the one that's signing off on everything. Right, right. You see, yeah. And you know, man, you know those experiences. We had them in the military, and I always bring right. these up. And, and and because we have to, as, as as in particularly as people in general, we have to understand humanity. But as black people, we got to get up off of this. Some some, some of this, uh, you know, I hate everything white. I hate every, you know all this kind of crazy stuff. Because a lot That's of people right. gotta look at what we do to each other. That's right. What we do to each other. That's not being said. If you go speak solidly and strongly with a black voice, then you also have to speak about what we do to each other. That and, we and, don't need to be doing at all. Not and, God, you know, that's not nation building. That's just someone extorting the people. And and also it's it's a it's a it's a it's a hidden theology. It's a hidden theology. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people say it. But 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 you know, they don't want to go in detail with it. They try to keep your own kind in a slave mentality. Yes. There we that's, go. That, that's the system. That's how it works here. It's, it's got a real stronghold of a slave mentality here that basically... Um, and we're here in the Midwest, so it's, it's bad. It's, it, it, it's, it's real bad. It's real bad. And Drew, you, you know, it's kind of... It's kind of like you're fighting over the same crumbs. Right, right. When yeah. you got an opportunity to go get the loaf, but you're going to stay down there and fight with the crumbs. Crumbs, right, right. Because they're so afraid you will get a slice or a loaf. Right. And, and not realizing if you get it, you can bring somebody else up. Right. But, but it's, 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 it has such a, a divis, divisive, um, systematic workup in, in this, in, 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 and everything here, and and um, and they play each other. They play the communities to to employ. They do the uh, what they call that dude uh, car um, car crash. The guy that who did the divide and conquering in Spain um, in Mexico. They do the exact same thing. 
They always play this divide and conquering game because they make you fight over something that they that make you think is very important while they really capitalizing on a very important things. Right. Right. So yeah. Yeah. divisiveness is from is definitely from the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we, we when we had that group where we had uh we did the integration. Remember that we had our own groups where I had I had a group of uh, white guys, remember yes. that? And yeah. then and we had we we did we did this, and we had some white guys co-mingle with black with, with black guys. Uh, a lot of these people were, were were pastors; they were influential people. And we had an open dialogue. Drew, I told you about this, right? We had mm-hmm. a we had an open dialogue, man. And it, and one of the things with with my group, I was like, I want you guys to be transparent. Yeah, you know. I want you to say, because we're not going to get nowhere with you just trying to be nice in front of me. That's the problem. And I'm listening to the problem right now. See, a lot of people who hold bigotry and racism in their heart, they have to act as though they don't. To That's you. right. That's right. To you. you know, off the top, they don't have no control over you from the beginning. That's right. Right. But but in that inside of that group, man, like I said, uh, it, a lot of people would have been amazed. Now the whole the whole uh, key was not to get angry, but was to understand. I mean, to hear their side without without interrupting, without coming back inflammatory. 